Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I warmly welcome you all to the Young Community Physicians Forum organized by the College of Community Physicians of Sri Lanka. Today, we will be discussing a topic which is very important and very in keeping with the times. Are we ready to combat malnutrition? And today we have three registrars in community medicine attached to the nutrition division to discuss this topic. Dr. K. Nathakorala, Dr. Gaini Visanayaka, Dr. H. M. C. D. Herat. Before we commence the discussion, I would kindly like to remind the audience to keep their mics muted and videos switched off throughout the session. And if anyone has any questions or comments, they can be posted in the chat box or directed towards the presenters at the end of the session. Without further ado, let's commence the discussion. Over to you, Dr. Kanishka. Uh, good afternoon. I'm uh, Dr. Kanishka. I'm an MD training community uh, attached to the division. Uh, okay, uh, we will move to our discussion. Uh, uh, as uh, Dr. Dakshi said, that our topic uh, is today that uh, are we ready to combat malnutrition? You know that there is a huge uh, discussion around uh, the country about the nutrition uh, status in the, in the population. There are some uh, reports and there are some uh, statements so uh, on nutrition so uh, uh, we are we will see now uh, how uh, we can uh, combat malnutrition actually are we ready to combat malnutrition so uh, if we uh, go to the uh, if we see how did they all unfold i mean you you all know what we have uh, gone through last uh, year so so uh, actually, uh, problem started maybe mostly uh, since the uh, since uh, 1988 with the uh, pol uh, pol uh, policy decisions made by uh, various uh, leaders in the country. We had some problems, but uh, in, uh, in uh, uh, 2019 we had COVID-19 uh, pandemic started in from China, but uh, it uh, hit Sri Lanka in 2020. So it uh, aff uh, its effect uh, were on various sectors across the country, across various sectors, but uh, in economical aspect, the issue uh, was on tourism. Uh, it uh, and other, there are other uh, effect on other uh, industries and other uh, major income sources of Sri Lanka. So they all led to this, as you uh, remember, a few months back, uh, this is our part, of, uh, part and partial of our life. We had a lot of cues and a lot of issues. Basically, uh, they all are due to the economic crisis in Sri Lanka. So at that time, we saw that these problems that we have, we have a shortage of uh, fuel, we, we had no gas, we have other issues and also political is uh, issues. But there were uh, other issues that were coming at that time, but we didn't see. Actually, some of us see, us see so that, but uh, our uh, we, uh, the focus was not on them. So, this is what happened after uh, months. This is there here. This is where we are now. Okay. So uh, what happened is uh, due uh, due to uh, there were some other policy decisions uh, decisions with uh, uh, those these uh, economic crisis. We had uh, reduction in agriculture production. So, uh, there were crisis of uh, fuel price and basic food items. They all affect. Uh, uh, the prices of food. So now we say in uh, to, uh, September to, uh, 2022, uh, we had food inflation is 95%. So it is fourth highest price inflation in the world right now. So uh, with that, there were uh, uh, shortages of, of uh, key important commodities uh, of food and also. Uh, they all led to, uh, led to, uh, led to situation where 
estimate of population in Sri Lanka now is in 14 sequel. Uh, as you see, uh, the food prices also are very high. And then people had to adapt to some uh, coping strategies. They can be like uh, coping strategies. They can be food-based coping strategies. So basically, uh, according to the World Food Program, it said that 79% of households are adopting food-based coping strategies. So 78 are resorting to cheap and unhealthy food alternatives. For, uh, are reducing portion sizes, 39 are reducing their number of meals. So that is a uh, issue in the uh, overall uh, uh, dietary patterns in Sri Lanka. So they all led to a situation where our nutrition stays within the nation. Uh, has affected. Uh, so you can see in this is this our nutrition month the data into uh, 2022 compared to two, uh, 2021. Uh, if we consider under five years of children, the underweight level it has uh, gone up. Uh, wasting under five again they uh, it has gone up. Also stand they all these parameters you can see they have gone up. There is a other side of that, the uh, overweight uh, percentage has reduced. So uh, generally, uh, you can see there are, uh, it is a, uh, according to our data, uh, nearly 43.4 percentage of children has any have any sort of any growth issue. Okay. Uh, this is about children, but if you uh, consider other uh, para nutrition parameters among other uh, groups, like pregnant mothers, uh, lactating mothers, like that, they, they also are not very encouraging. So, that is the current situation, and that is the actual situation in the country. But what is the ideal situation? Now, we want a good nutrition status in the country, so we need people to eat healthy and uh, we want to be able to eat healthy. So uh, considering that in uh, uh, 2021, we launched our uh, food-based strategy guideline for Sri Lankans. It was a set of recommendations for healthy eating, the appropriate evidence-based and behavior-focused guidelines. So according to that, we had uh, general guidelines for people, uh, persons, uh, healthy adults. We had uh, recommendations, food, we had food groups, we had uh, recommended serving sizes. We had, uh, we have uh, uh, identified the food that should be avoided or reduced and also healthy dietary patterns. So uh, we had uh, major six food groups we had identified. They were uh, cereals and starchy food, vegetables and green leaves, pulses, fish, egg, or lean meats, fruits, uh, fresh milk and fermented products, nuts and oily seeds and oils. Okay, uh, what we expected is that to uh, if we uh, consume a balanced diet with a variety of these uh, food groups, essential food groups, uh, we can uh, have a proper nutrition and so we can prevent a range of diseases and also all form of malnutrition. That was the ideal situation, the ideal way of eating. But we have a different uh, scenario right now. So the, the challenge is to fill this gap between the actual situation and the ideal situation. So uh, we, we should uh, try as far as possible to fill this gap. So as a response, emergency response to the, this, these nutrition issues in the country. We had our emergency nutrition plan in June 2022. Uh, there are major three areas, uh, ensuring for the security, addressing health system gaps, also addressing gaps in communication and empowerment. So uh, today uh, we are focusing on ensuring nutrition security part. Uh, there are a uh, few areas when we consider ensuring food security. Uh, one, in, uh, one is alternative and uh, about alternative foods and also home gardening, sustainable villages, 
first take a sample menus and food basket. These are the areas we are uh, uh, discussing today. So when we uh, discussing about uh, all the food alternatives, so people sometimes when we see uh, talk about the uh, food alternatives, so people think it's like eating some uh, cotton leaves like that, but it's not actually the that kind of a uh, food alternatives. Actually, food alternatives are that uh, uh, low cost food with the same nutrition level that as it, uh, as high cost food. So we we need uh, the our basic uh, idea is to meet our minimal data requirements per day. So uh, our uh, we have to find ways to uh, meet these nutrition requirements in using low cost alternatives. So a uh, positive thing in uh, Sri Lanka is that uh, we have a wide variety of foods, including uh, cereal, uh, yams, vegetable foods. Uh, uh, fruits, we have wide variety of foods. But uh, the thing is, uh, people uh, love these uh, foods are uh, unaware of, so they are unutilized. So when we discuss it about alternatives, we are always uh, considering this. This is that we we have to identify what are the abundant foods in your area. There are some there are some foods that they are uh, abundant in some uh, some seasons in the uh, in the in the year, uh, and also the availability different based on these factors. So uh, when we consider about alternatives, it is not that uh, we totally go into some uh, other. Uh, type of food that's mainly it is about considering about the local available and low cost food uh, in particular areas. So, uh, so if we consider about our main uh, food groups, we said that uh, initially we had cereal and uh, starchy foods. Okay, so uh, rice is our staple food. So it basically, we do not have uh, uh, re uh, we can't replace. Rice because uh, rice on, uh, does not only provide carbohydrate, it also provides protein, it also provides some vitamins and minerals. So we should consume rice every day, but uh, we can do some adjustment like that. Uh, like uh, we have that uh, locally available low cost starchy food, like uh, some fruits, tubers. Uh, you can see that jackfruits, uh, breadfruits, and many yolks, and there are some. Uh, Pams and tubes we have, so we can add them uh, with rice so that we uh, get our carbohydrate requirement. So, uh, about uh, carb, uh, starch food, those are the adjustments we can do. Then it, it comes to veg uh, fruits and veg vegetables and green leaves. Usually, again, we have to uh, uh, understand that it is not that. Uh, Usually, when we uh, discussing uh, vegetables, the first few vegetables we uh, that comes to our uh, mind mind is uh, mind are like carrot, uh, beet, uh, beans like. That. But yeah, that but there are a lot of vegetables uh, in uh, they are which are abundant in particular areas in the country. So it is uh, again we have to uh, understand that it is. Uh, the, it it become it becomes an alternative based on the uh, based on the area that, that uh, particular uh, people are living. So in uh, some areas, uh, maybe carrot or beetroot or beans, they 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 are the abundant vegetables vegetables in their area. So they, in that case, they are that they can be low cost and readily available. Based on like that, uh, based on the so geographical areas, the uh, alternatives can be changed. So there we have given here uh, uh, you may uh, some of uh, them uh, are not very uh, popular ones, but there are many fruits and veg uh, many vegetables and also green leaves uh, in the country. Uh, that are not uh, we that that we are not uh, that uh, those are not uh, very uh, common in the markets. Okay, uh, so the major issue in uh, 
our country uh, with regard to this nutrient uh, uh, protein. Uh, basically, uh, the prices of uh, fish and meat, people are, uh, those prices are unaffordable for many people in the country. So we again, we should have some kind of adjustment for them also. So what we uh, suggest is, uh, one thing is we can go for low cost. Again, fruits. Usually, when we uh, heard about the fruits, we have uh, in our mind those apples, then orange, orange, and uh, pineapples. But there are a lot of uh, fruits which are available in certain areas in the uh, country. So, based on that, they can have these uh, fruits. So, uh, when we discuss in food alternatives, it's not about uh, food only. That there are, we can have. We can adapt into some alternative cooking methods or alternative preparation methods of the foods also. So we have to encourage people to explore new recipes and cooking methods and try to try different food combinations. That so based on, uh, by that we can improve their nutritional uh, status. For example, in vegetable curries we can add uh, three or four spreads. So it also provides some proteins and uh, uh, proteins. Uh, also, uh, you may have heard about one uh, pot cooking. Uh, there are we can uh, prepare mixed curries with uh, leftover raw foods like that. We have different. We can try different methods of uh, cooking, and people can have to think innovatively, cook differently to. Improve, the, improve their nutrition status with the whatever they whatever whatever available to them. So uh, there are another examples. Uh, they can uh, mix pulses with grains. They can. Uh, there are some parts we uh, uh, throw away. Like uh, heads of spread streams that we usually we, we can we say that we can wash them and dry them and powder and you can use them when we prepare certain curries. Okay, uh, also, we have to identify and consume all edible parts of, of uh, vegetables. For example, if we get fruits, we can usually people eat uh, jackfruit seeds, but we throw CBD and hiri 
need not use, but they also can be uh, used for prepare some uh, curries and foods. Okay, even in banana, you may heard about kesel butter. We can eat with peel of the banana. We can use those. There are uh, parts of the food that we do usually we do not use, but we can uh, use them to prepare some food in the in an, you know, different ways. Okay, the, the, we have some uh, publications in our uh, division. In, if you go to our website, you can uh, find these publications. We, we have a lot of uh, recipes with uh, underutilized foods and also uh, usually we do not use when we cook. So these are some examples. Okay, with that, uh, other thing is we have to think about the preserving of seasonal food in excess. Okay. Uh, there are some food that if they are abundant in some uh, seasons, but uh, they, are, uh, they, they we can't find them after that. So in that case, if we have excess in the, the, uh, the, those seasons, we can uh, use some preservative uh, methods to preserve them and then we can use them uh, in other period of the years. So uh, that's basically about the food alternative and alternative uh, methods of cooking. Uh, then uh, we will uh, uh, continue with home gardening and the uh, parts with uh, Dr. Gaini. Thank you. Uh, good, af uh, good afternoon, sir, madam and uh, colleagues. Today I'm going to discuss about uh, nutrition sensitive interventions and sufficiency economy based villages for sustainable mm -hmm. nutrition security. Uh, uh, topics we will be discussed today are nutrition specific and nutrient sensitive interventions, uh, implementation of home gardening uh, concept and implementation of sufficiency economy based villages. First we discuss the nutrition specific interventions. Uh, what are the nutrition specific interventions? Inter uh, intervention that uh, addresses uh, immediate causes of undernutrition is known as nutrition specific interventions. Uh, there are uh, two types of uh, nutrition specific interventions that are micronutrient supplementations and food supplementation. Micro, uh, for example, for my, micronutrient supplementation are weekly iron folate supplementation as, as all, all we know, we are distributing iron and folate, folic acid for school children from grade one to 12 for 24 weeks per, uh, per year. Other thing is vitamin A mega dose supplementation. This is also distributed in the schools uh, at the uh, uh, school medical inspections for grade four, seven, and 10 students. Food, uh, when we consider food supplementation, uh, we, uh, we are distributing a three portion for pregnant and lactating mothers and uh, undernourished children. The, Fortified rice, in, rice with iron will be distributed in school midday meal program. Uh, it is not uh, currently done in our our country. We are planning to do it uh, near future. And the distribution of uh, BP hundred also is a food supplementation intervention. These are near when we discuss the nutrition sensitive interventions. Uh, home gardening is is a mostly adapted uh, intervention in the current economic crisis led to poor purchasing power by a variety of food items rich in micronutrients. Uh, vegetables and fruits are considered as the most sustainable, effective dietary sources of micronutrients. Uh, home gardening will ensure the variety of foods with different micronutrients to our daily meals. Other nutrition Sensitive interventions are establish, establish small hand pens at household level and promote aquaculture and livestock uh, management wherever possible. But if at implementation of home gardening, following needs to be considered. Home gardening promotion to bridge the micronutrient gap, gap uh, and empower community-based organization 
we need to provide sorry we need to provide technical assistance to how assistance to households for nutrition based gardening they should empower community based organizations at ground level the usually the kanta samvidhana vadhiri samiti and civil society organizations we need to empower establishment of monitoring and evaluation mechanism at district provincial and national level to to monitor the nutrition sensitive home gardening when you consider the home gardening we need to encourage everyone for home gardening uh, any individuals family any individuals or family living in urban rural or state sector can adopt uh, home gardening easily it ensures variety of food and gives different nutrients to our meals other advantage of home gardening is it can be encouraged as a source of income generation regarding home gardening following requirements we need to make provision of technical advice knowledge and guidance purchasing of uh, and provision of high quality seeds uh, he have to encourage seed banks and exchange the seeds within the community support efficient efficient irrigation system for the home gardening the responsible agency for all above activities are uh, not the health sector but the non health sector uh, ministries uh, involving the uh, minister of agriculture water and irrigation uh, water and sanitation minister of water and sanitation economic development and trade ministry this is a picture of a uh, plastic metal containers that are used to wait groups in a limited space we need to adopt infrequently utilized and underutilized spaces and discarded items for home gardening maximally and this is a picture of uh, limited space used for home gardening this is roped off for implementation of home gardening following recommendations or advices need to adopt uh, we have to choose plants more small for the area and pre preference and need of the family and select plants that can provide essential micronutrients here we have to remember remember variety of vegetables fruits provide that provide new different nutrients we have to plant another cycle midway so that there is a continuity of harvest throughout and seek more advice from agriculture instructor or technical assistant at agrarian service center in your area this uh, this is booklet prepared by our action division uh, on home gardening you can read this one from our website this is the link uh, excess production from the home gardening we can sell share with neighbors and preserve for the off season the preservative methods are chemical me chemical methods such as salting pickling of some fruits and vegetables immersing in bee honey or in edible oils especially fruits and vegetables uh, use of he heated cold methods to preserve vegetables fruits and fish Ex uh, excess fish can fish and some vegetables can be smoked preparation of jam or cordial from season seasonally available fruits and the dehydration or drying is another method uh, we have already you know from the ancient time uh, producing flour from cassava corn or jackfruit uh, dehydration of fruits and vegetables such as tomato ash plantain jack and jack or bread this is picture of uh, uh, dehydration methods the uh, producing flour from corn uh, cassava and dehydration of ma manioc and salting of lime promotion of aquaculture that is freshwater fish and livestock management need to encourage to obtain adequate protein requirement for the reasonable prices consumption of freshwater fish uh, need to promote via raising awareness and addressing palatability issues myths and beliefs related related to nutrition composition of freshwater fish we need to promote aquaculture and livestock management uh, and need to promote the suitable places particularly particularly where the adequate space is available when we consider consider the freshwater fish it is differ only a few nutrients 
freshwater fish generally are higher in calcium and also slightly higher levels of monounsaturated and polyunsaturated fatty acids. Freshwater fish salmon contain higher proportion of vitamin A and folic folic acid compared to other uh, marine fish. However, marine uh, species uh, exhibit good com uh, combination of protein and mineral minerals, but in problem we met with the freshwater fish es established small hand paints at household level will also ensure the protein requirement in our daily meal at low cost which also can establish in households where the adequate space available uh, when we uh, then we discuss the establishment of sufficiently economic based villages for sustainable nutrition security although the terminology uh, is uh, very terminology is uh, at high end uh, simply this means village, uh, nutrition for villages from village uh, in singular we can say uh, game portion a gamin concept of this uh, includes the village needs to map the way to achieve sufficiency in nutrition largely through the local production here we uh, not all the villages would have same composition of food production but uh, adjoining or nearby villages can adopt mechanism to exchanging or selling their crops to get what is not produced. The overall model should take into account plants, pulses, uh, green leafy vegetables, legumes, fruits, and dairy products, eggs, fish, water, fish, and other to be made avail available within the village. This is a sample of being of the concept. We will see. The paddy cultivation in one one part of the village, and there is a temple uh, in other areas, and there is a fish tank, fish tank, uh, and uh, poultry farming and uh, cattle rearing area. We also, can use for uh, uh, production of the fertilizer as well. The objective of the sufficient economy based villages is to achieve nutrition security through agricultural support, economic model at village level, utilizing existing human and other natural resources to full potential. We need to understand, uh, sorry, so in, the, in this method at district level, we understand the current level of sufficiency of village, village and the need by mapping, and understand the concept, introduce and capacity building of key stakeholders. We have to train, train the tra we have to training the trainers on village level preparation and developing plan for sufficiency throughout the year. And we have to sharing experience and best practices to build best practices. And we need to monitor uh, the progress and at the district and district divisional levels. This is the end of my presentation. For further details, we can you can use our website for emergency nutrition plan and home gardening book booklet. And for the home gardening guideline, guidelines at the uh, Ministry of Agriculture website. Thank you. Then Dr. Chaturika will continue with her presentation. Hello. Uh, good afternoon uh, uh, to everyone. Uh, I'll be uh, presenting a little bit about sample menus, food baskets, and foster care today. So uh, like uh, you may be wondering like why these were included in as a part of today's presentations. So um, if you have a look at the nutrition emergency plan, uh, we have identified um, um, the strengthening of the school uh, meal program, establishment of community kitchens and donation of food baskets, that is dry rations uh, to uh, those in need. So uh, what we thought was uh, that in order for uh, uh, people to do this, we must uh, have sort of some recommendations in, in place so that uh, food security and diversity are ensured uh, through these processes. So um, yeah, so uh, donation of cooked cook, cook, cook food. So we have, uh, like I said, um, seen the need to increase the uh, establishment of community kitchens and uh, strengthen the school meal program via uh, donation of cooked uh, meals for school children and preschool children. So in order to do this, uh, some uh, recommendations were set in place. Uh, the first was to ensure diversity. That is, if we are giving uh, meals continuously, we should ensure that the same thing is given every day and lots of different uh, vegetables and fruits uh, should be incorporated into the meals that are given to ensure diversity of the uh, uh, meals that are given. So, and uh, earlier in the presentations, we highlighted the need to include food from different uh, 
food groups into our uh, into the uh, into our meals. So the same concept applies here. So uh, so that uh, now in our uh, in these cooked meals, uh, whole grains and cereals should be included along with green leaves and uh, locally available low cost vegetables and fruits. So that uh, nutrition security is ensured, as well as uh, long-term uh, feasibility of these programs are also ensured. So uh, another thing is that if you are giving rice and cereals for some of the meals, these can be substituted with, with the yams and manioc, and also within the same meal also, you can use back things like jackfruit, breadfruit, and uh, manioc, uh, and also other yams to uh, like uh, reduce the amount of rice that is needed. But having said this, rice should be incorporated into these meals, especially like in the main meals. And uh, then a protein source should be there. So we have identified that freshwater fish and soybeans, that is, I'm not talking about TVP, but the bean, the soybean, and also uh, small fish, as described in the earlier uh, presentations, are also very good low-cost sources of proteins. And in order to save cooking fuel in these programs, uh, we have uh, advised to have salads and also uh, and give uh, one pot dishes and uh, in cooking you have to be careful to use less salt sugar and oil and uh, not to reuse oil that has been used for deep frying and uh, we have recommended to avoid commercially prepared and uh, prepared ultra processed food because these food uh, contain uh, many harmful substances and along with that, so uh, along with these rec recommendations, we have also given uh, some sample menus. So the thing is, these are not hard and fast things, but these are just some uh, guides so that uh, these could be altered and uh, given. So uh, we have tried to keep uh, the uh, these menus varied. Like here, we have like a rice and curry thing, and then the next meal is like some uh, with some chickpeas uh, and. Uh, uh, another meal, for example, with string hoppers. So we have we have also tried to vary these meals so that uh, if anybody doing these programs can get an idea of what what and what to what not to incorporate. And also uh, the recommendations are based on the um, uh, different age groups, so that roughly the amount that is needed for a particular age group is uh, given, and uh, this will be helpful in uh, calculating uh, the amount of food that needs to be cooked as well. So uh, then. Uh, while doing this, we have to also ensure food safety. So uh, basic recommendations for food safety are also given, such as washing hands and maintaining hygiene. So uh, one thing I uh, need to point out is that uh, uh, the public health inspector of the area should be um, informed if somebody is going ahead with such a program. And also, uh, Children should be given food under the supervision of an adult, and we do not advise uh, provision of food for infants through these mass distribution programs, because uh, mostly the food for infants have to be uh, like prepared very under very hygienic methods, and as well as the dietary content, that the dietary fiber content and uh, may not be suitable for the infants. So therefore, uh, even though we encourage these uh, community kitchens and um, other uh, cooked food donation programs, uh, uh, provision of food for uh, infants through these programs are not in advised. And then the other thing that uh, we are um, uh, talking about under food security is the donation of food packets and food baskets. So uh, here also we have uh, tried to calculate the amount of food that should be uh, given, like as in if you are giving something that how much of food uh, of, a, of particular dry rations should be given uh, for a person per day. So uh, that also, if you can see, like in the table, we have, uh, you can see that uh, for different types of food, we have identified how much of this food is required by an adult or an adolescent or a child or a pregnant lady uh, per day. Uh, so uh, this also we hope that will provide uh, somebody who is going to uh, pro like provide these baskets that um, they can also have an idea of how much of uh, these dry rations to be given. So for example, if uh, we have a rice for a family of four people, including a mother, father, adolescent girl and one year old child is about one kilogram per day. That is like, if you look at the rice, um, the amount of rice that is needed by the adult male, that is 300. Uh, for the female, it's 250. And for the adolescent girl, it's 350 and 90 for the infant. So that will give, a, give about uh, one kilogram of rice per day if uh, to be included in the uh, food bags. So what we thought is if this does not happen, uh, if we do not give enough, uh, 
the like some uh, people in the family may not eat it by like as in like example parents may give food to the children and uh, they will not be eating so to prevent this we have uh, these recommendations uh, for the food baskets as well so the again for the components that food groups that were described earlier so we need some um, rice that we have advised less polished, polished and parboiled rice and then um, these can be like uh, substituted with yams and other starchy foods such as uh, jackfruit bread food and even wheat flour so uh, for example if uh, if you look at an adult if they need 300 grams of rice per day we can uh, like substitute 100 grams of rice with wheat flour as well then uh, pulses should be included to ensure an adequate protein intake and eggs and some low cost protein also be there in a food basket such as eggs sprats kuniso or even a fresh water fish and uh, locally available low cost fruits and vegetables should be incorporated along with coconut and coconut oil and uh, in in addition to these uh, like we can Inc include any other accompaniments like uh, the spices and things like tea based on our um, local food culture so then uh, we come to the third part that i uh, want to discuss that is the foster schemes so uh, foster schemes are also advised uh, it is ad advised to establish these foster schemes so uh, the department of probation uh, under the Ministry of Women, Child Affairs, and Social Empowerment, they have uh, initiated, actually, this they are before, they have reinitiated a program called Athvela, where we can make don do donations uh, to um, uh, support the support children. So in their website, you can see there's a link uh, to a Google document where you can give details and make donations. And they have also pledged to be transparent about, that is, donors will be, um, like, they will uh, once the programs have been conducted, the donors will be uh, given uh, evidence of uh, what has been done with the money. And uh, the thing is, these foster schemes, I mean, this is, we, we don't have to necessarily go through this program, but if there are any well wishers or groups of certain people who want to uh, upscale or strengthen school meal programs, they can uh, work with uh, identify schools which are in need of um, such uh, meals uh, with the help of the local MOH also and uh, provide. Uh, um, these children in, with coordination with uh, coordinating with the MOH and the uh, uh, and the school uh, principal. So uh, and another thing uh, we thought uh, would be good to discuss is like uh, cash management because that this is also a part of the nutrition uh, uh, emergency plan. And this was a cash module uh, cash management module that was um, developed by the state and urban health unit of the Ministry of Health uh, because uh, sometimes uh, it's not. A problem with cash but with cash with the income but with cash management so this module also um, um, uh, target, uh, tends to improve the nutritional status and healthy lifestyles among vulnerable populations and reduce the expenditure on alcohol and other substances and also uh, reduce risky financial uh, investments and in, improve saving among these communities so uh, it is good to have a look at this book too and uh, educate uh, communities on cash management as well and finally, uh, like I just want to point out where to find all these documents. I mean, what we have, all three of us, what we have presented are uh, published documents that are uh, in the uh, in our website. So if you go to the nutrition uh, division um, website, there will be a tab called resources. And under that um, tab, there will be uh, the food-based dietary guideline and the national emergency nutrition plan and uh, some other guidelines that we have developed. That is, uh, you can see the, some of the guidelines, nutrition at low cost, uh, no find alternatives, grow and share, etc. So these guidelines are all there. And also under the publications tab, also there are several other uh, guidelines that we have uh, doc, uh, developed. I mean, these are presented by Dr. Kanishk and Dr. Gaini as well earlier. So I just wanted to highlight where to uh, like uh, download these documents from. So, and uh, then we come to the um, end of the presentation. Uh, thank you for listening. And uh, we apologize again for the technical glitch that happened earlier. Uh, thank you very much uh, for the informative findings on this pertinent topic. Now the floor is open for questions. Uh, we have good afternoon, everyone. Uh, first, I want to congratulate all the three speakers for 
the comprehensive uh, presentations they have done on a very timely topic. Uh, my question is, uh, have sufficiency-based villages been implemented in Sri Lanka? Thank you. Uh, thank you for your question, Dr. Karnaratna. Actually, uh, we have, um, actually, they are not formally established in Sri Lanka yet, but we have proposed models and we are encouraging establishment of uh, such uh, um, villages within communities. And uh, also just this is from a personal um, ex uh, experience we had like uh, during one of our training programs, if uh, like some villages are functioning this way, like for example, once we met like uh, a person, uh, a girl, actually an adult, who said that in her village uh, they have the they have maintained sufficiency which actually happened during covid when there were no uh, supplies to their village uh, that uh, like different have houses allocated as to what they were growing so exactly for example one house grew uh, say uh, uh, green leafy vegetables another house would grow another type of vegetables and then they would uh, exchange and buy uh, uh, vegetables off of each other and this practice has continued from covid days until now and another this was actually we uh, got to know this from a uh, from some ad, uh, during an adolescent program and there's another boy who said that in, in their village so fish fish are grown in tanks because they had no space for ponds etc so uh, then um, and th those people who grow that will uh, sell it to the other people in the village so so like it is happening, I think, uh, unofficially like among people, but it has not been formally uh, established as of yet. But we are encouraging uh, the development of such villages. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. There is a question in the chat box. Uh, is BP100 available to buy? No, it's not there uh, to buy. I mean, it's not a commercial product. There was another uh, question about do nutrition division have posters about low cost diet menus? Um, uh, I think uh, there are no there are publications that is uh, in the uh, like I showed earlier in the uh, sources. Uh, the menus are included under the uh, in, inside the nutrition emergency plan that is it's at, attached as an annexure. Uh, the other documents are also there uh, to download. There's also another document uh, on uh, how to use like less commonly uh, think uh, newly and uh, uh, use uh, like less commonly used food that uh, menu booklet is also uh, available to download. Uh, we do not have uh, printed materials on uh, alternative. Uh, there's an uh, there's a booklet on alternative food uh, that uh, that is there. Uh, but not a poster. I also have one question. Uh, are there any special programs for the older persons in Sri Lanka uh, regarding nutrition related issues? Thank you. Oh, can you repeat the question, please? Hello. And are there any special programs for the older persons uh, nutrition related issues? Uh, we yeah we have a community guide that has been pro prepared for older persons. Uh, yeah, that can yeah. yeah. For elderly, we have uh, uh, we have uh, for uh, community be. Uh, Commenting uh, elderly, we have a community guide about the nutrition, uh, their nutrition needs, and how we uh, how we uh, handle their nutritional issues. And also for our new uh, elderly people who are in residential care, we also have some. Uh, we have developed uh, standards, nutri national nutrition standards, uh, about, uh, for those uh, institutions uh, on how they have to uh, maintain their nutritional level for for the, for uh, both uh, these groups the community people and also for the decision care we have uh, published uh, the, again we have published some guidelines they are also they are in the, our website okay thank you very much yeah there is a question regarding uh, any sri lankan national guidelines for nutrition supplementation for children uh, uh, not for children the school children there is a circulars in the family health bureau website uh, for the supplementation uh, you can use this. If there are no more questions, we would like to conclude the session. But once again, I would like to thank Dr. Kanishka Athkorala, Dr. Gaini Pisanayaka, and Dr. Chatrika Herat. And uh, I would like to thank College of Community Physicians of Sri Lanka for organizing this forum and to all the participants. Hope you all enjoyed. Have a pleasant day. Thank you.